Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for February 28th, 2020. Holy moly, what a whipsaw yesterday. Let's take a look at these charts, settle in, and get ready for the Friday edition of the morning market prep video. So yesterday we had this ugly, ugly whipsaw. Second day in a row where it, we start getting the feeling, hey, we might start getting a little bit of a relief rally and then more sellers pile on, um, pushing us down uh, once again. The fears about this virus um, really have set a new paradigm for the market because I don't, I don't recall in my trading history where we've ever had to deal with something like this and and the part the part that's really hard to quantify for the market I believe is that we're just at the beginning of this this could be going on for some time and the spread of this virus um, even here in the United States may be just right at its very beginning so markets are struggling hard trying to figure out what all of this means so after yesterday's selling, we entered correction territory here in the market. Just it's hard to believe that just six trading days ago, we were up here pushing up here around new record highs to uh, now be in correction territory and looking at a little bit more selling um, this morning. So uh, markets are whipping around quite a bit right now in the pre-market um, during the night dow futures dropped 500 additional points they have recovered that and they've been whipping around this morning um, tremendously it's pretty hard to pin down where this might open today what i would suggest though is that since we did drop another 500 points overnight it really with the with the attitude that we have here in the market it really wouldn't be out of the question for us to retest that low sometime during the day so keep that in mind even though we might catch a little bit of buying or or whip in here we could easily see more selling into the weekend and that uncertainty of the weekend always um, has people on edge um let's take a look at some of the price supports and things that we have here in the chart you can see we were hoping that we would catch some price support at least right in here that didn't happen um we gapped down below that yesterday morning tried to rally up to test that area of price resistance and then ended up whipsawing um, on lower so as you can see at the close of the day we were down in this area where there isn't an awful lot of price support we have a few points in the chart um, for that price support but I got to tell you, it wouldn't be all that much of a surprise to see if we drift down in here um, during the session today. And you can see we have a lot more evidence of price action support in this area. So keep that in mind. We could certainly sink into that level pretty darn fast. And um, I know it's an uncomfortable thought to think about but that certainly seems to be a possibility so let's keep a close eye on that diamonds not looking healthy here at all and we have to understand that even any rally back um any rally back with the whipsaws that we've seen here lately can be subject to those quick reversals back down so um you know this is the one of those times where we really wish we could get some good news but that doesn't seem to be um, happening right now um, as the virus continues to expand adding more countries infected um, all of those different things moody's downgrading um, well i shouldn't say downgrading but raising the chance of a global um, recession as a result of the virus to 40 percent um, certainly we we continue to pile on um, these things Japan part of Japan declared a state of emergency last night um, um, I, Iran has closed its schools Japan has closed its schools for a month this just seems to be um, 
um, spinning further and further out of the out of control and obviously making the markets very nervous overnight uh, Japan saw tremendous selling um, we had Asian markets all being drawn down heavily last night um, with um, Japan's market um, closing down 800 points um, and Hong Kong being hit very, very hard as well. Even Shanghai, that's been very well supported uh, by the government, um, even saw some pretty heavy selling down uh, over three, almost 4%. So pretty darn ugly. Now, <clears throat> when I look to Europe right now, Europe is sharply lower now across the board. They had fallen as much as 4%. They're trying to come back up a little bit, but all of their uh, major indexes are looking down about 3% this morning. So with U.S. markets showing just slight declines here this morning, it wouldn't be out of the question to see more selling before the end of the day. So we'll want to keep that in mind as we approach this day. Um, for a lot of traders, uh, you know, I've suggested this before, it's a good time to be standing aside. You know, the old saying that uh, markets take the escalator up and take the window or the elevator shaft down, we um, have certainly seen that here in this market. And this this reaction may be an overreaction and i know there's a lot of folks out there saying this is ridiculous this is a big overreaction and that may be true but when we start feeling fear in the market such as we do right now it's pretty darn hard for the market to um to control that fear and we start seeing those uh, mutual fund redemption calls going in, 401k money being pulled into money markets. Um, everyone is running for the door trying to protect themselves here in the market. So don't be surprised. This may not be over uh, to the downside. So we lost this level of price support. And as you can see this morning, we're gapping um, lower here this morning, which there is some price support right in here but we have to recognize the fact that there may be more price support right down in this area. I would hate to think that we sink that far, but we have to be realistic that that certainly is a possibility um, because we're gapping right into this support this morning if we don't catch some buyers here. And you kind of have to wonder who's gonna be a buyer here heading into the weekend. Um, so be really, really careful, everyone. Let's take a look at the Qs, QQQ just fallen off a cliff here um, it was a pretty steep cliff I have to admit that this is a correction um, we were uh, very much overbought um, just six days ago in the Nasdaq and now we've gone into that full correction territory here's the thing with the Nasdaq if we take a look at that Nasdaq we could still reach down here toward that 200 day moving average so this may not be finished here in um, the NASDAQ as well. So you can see we're opening right about in here. Uh, at least that's where it's indicated right now. Um, if sellers continue to pile on, don't be too surprised if we're down here testing this level right in here pretty darn quickly. So keep that in mind. Um, we may not be finished with selling. If we take a look at IWM, IWM, um, my goodness, um, falling like a rock um, and continuing to be very whippy in its price action. Um, we're looking at gapping down here in IWM, and I think the next target here for IWM is down here around 145, um, that next level of support. So um, hang on to your seats. It could be a very wild day as we head into the weekend. And if you don't, if you have the ability to just stand aside to just protect your capital, that may be a wise thing as we uh, as we move into this uncertainty of the weekend. Let's take a look at the VIX. Yesterday, I made mention that we could certainly see these upper levels in the VIX. Um, and wow, um, we went there. Um, not only went there, but broke through this uh, 37 handle, almost 38 handle. And we could, with more selling today, see um, us reaching up here toward that 50 handle here in the VIX. So 
uh, keep a close eye on that. Now, one thing I would say that if fear starts to subside a little bit at all, we could see a substantial pullback here in, in the VIX. But right now, Panic is in control here in the market, and panic is usually uh, ir a bit irrational, and we could certainly see uh, more upside levels uh, created in that chart. One thing for sure, certain is all of the talk that I had been given for a long, long time um, about the possibility of us catching support that the real selling wouldn't begin unless we catch support. And I was thinking that we might push up here and find some support in here before we really sold, but nope, we came right off of here and zoom uh, to the upside. So watching those technicals, watching that price action is obviously very, very important. Let's take a look at T21. 22 and I got to tell you it's not helping us much at all right now because what it is showing is that we are in extreme oversold condition in the short term but that doesn't necessarily mean with the panic that we have going on that we will catch a bounce or that relief rally is imminent um, heading into uh, an uncertain weekend so let's watch that close. We're down here scraping on the bottom, uh, no doubt about it, but we could certainly um, slip on lower if those, uh, well, if the panic continues, if the news keeps piling on um, in a bad way, um, we could certainly continue to slip to the downside. Pretty ugly, 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 ugly um, as we look at this market. Let's take a look um, at our economic calendar for today and we do have a couple of things on the calendar to pay attention to we have international trade and we have uh, personal income and outlays coming out so we'll want to pay attention to that at 8 30. i think you know the market could get some response to that certainly but remember the the, the predominance of activity here is we're not ignoring most of anything except news on uh, the virus outbreak we have uh, James Bullard speaking here at 915, and we have Chicago PMI, Consumer Sentiment, uh, coming in here 945 and 10 o'clock. So we'll want to watch those. Um, any of these numbers start to slip or whatever, that could certainly add to some pressure here in the market. Let's hope they continue to come in pretty strong, showing that our economy is overall pretty strong. But I got to imagine there's some fear starting to creep into some of these numbers. They may not happen until, um, uh, you know, we have a time to assimilate all of this and it may be, um, you know, further into, um, into next month when we really start to see some of the damaging numbers come out. But let's keep a close eye on those anyway. On the earnings front, we have a pretty, well, a, a lighter day than normal, about 70 companies reporting earnings. Um, of those, there's not a whole lot of real notables, but we'll want to take a, a look at a company like Foot Locker. Foot Locker will be reporting today. Um, looks like it's gapping slightly higher on its report. We'll want to keep an eye on that. Foot Locker moving up. Um, SSP reporting today big. <laughs> wow, look at the um, TC2000 gives me the ability to see pre market. Uh, bid ask spread, and you can see bid ask spread. They market makers are really protecting themselves there with that um, uh, that wide of a spread. Um, let's see, and um, we also have Wayfair. Wayfair um, reporting, and looks like Wayfair gapping substantially lower here this morning. So pretty darn ugly. Pretty darn ugly um, market here. But before we just start jumping out the window ourselves, let's think very closely and carefully about what this means. When we look at a market like this, uh, one of the first things, it, it, we just get that sense that everything's going bad. And right now that's true. We, we kind of have everything going bad in the news and everything continues to pile on, making things worse and worse. But what I want to remind everyone is if you protect your capital right now, if you stand aside, if you avoid getting involved in this and avoid the wild speculation, when this is over, there will be some great stock prices 
great deals to be had. Corrections are an opportunity. They are not a reason to, you know, run for the doors and sheer panic and that kind of thing. We want to make sure and protect our capital. We don't want to over trade during a market like this. When the uh, emotion is really high and these big whips occur, but I want to let everyone know that this is actually a good thing for us as traders. If and when this um, correction ends, there are going to be some incredible deals um, in the market. So kind of keep that in mind. Corrections like this um, can be pretty troublesome for a while. Remember, um, I know a lot of folks are hoping we're going to see um, you know, just a relief rally that takes us all the way back up. With with the situation that we're dealing with here with the virus and really at the beginning of that, I would not expect that. As a matter of fact, I would expect a, a very choppy back and forth ranging and we could even see more lows after that before this all settles out. But when that does occur, um, there's going to be some great opportunities. So protect your capital. Take take the time to focus and protect yourself in a market like this. There's money to be made for really quick day traders, but as a swing trader, position trader, there's we just need to be really, really careful here. So think about that carefully and just realize, hey, when this is over, there's going to be bargains, and um, we don't have to be jumping out of a window or thinking that the world's coming to an end because it's likely not. And uh, this is not the first time this has occurred. Um, we've seen this many times before. But one thing I will tell you is that I do think that V bottom that we've kind of gotten a bit used to um, in this market is unlikely to occur here right now. So be really, really careful. With that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And I want to say thank you for everyone who just, you know, continues to watch these videos. I really, really appreciate it. And, and your kind comments that you're getting some great use out of these uh, means the world to me. So thank you so much. If this is the first time you've seen these videos, please make sure and click that subscribe button. And then also click that thumbs up button to make sure you're notified every time I post one of these videos. And hopefully you're seeing none of this that I do is about hype. It's all about the technicals of the chart, thinking about looking or looking about at all the different aspects that may be affecting the market for today. And if you find that helpful, please do click those thumbs up buttons and leave a comment. I truly appreciate it. Now, what I normally do is provide a bunch of potential stock trades, but I got to tell you guys with the free fall that we're in right now, that's a pretty dangerous thing to do. Um, I could, I could certainly point out a few stocks that have held up relatively well. We've got Netflix, you know, kind of the stay at home type stocks, um, holding up quite well. And you can see it It had a big spike up yesterday and completely reversed. It got sucked into that selling yesterday, as really pretty much everything did, got sucked into that selling yesterday. So we could see uh, this pullback in here provide an opportunity in Netflix, but you're going to have to be really, really careful in this market. Another place, uh, CME. Now, CME got pulled into the selling yesterday. Um, CME has been rallying up nicely. It hit this resistance high here in the the chart had a pretty ugly bearish engulfing candle yesterday but all the because of the increased volatility in the market the CME has been benefiting from all of that price activity uh, going through their exchange so kind of keep that in mind there are a few stocks out there that look pretty good but a lot of stocks um, have just even really defensive stocks have been uh, pulled into this move um, and are being, uh, well, unfortunately, um, beat up pretty darn hard um, here recently. So we're going to have to be pretty careful about how we approach. Now, yesterday I mentioned that when we start thinking about moving into the market, and I'm going to I'm going to go to the diamonds here, and I'm going to go to a 15 minute chart, and. When we look at a downtrend like this, and by the way, this grade in area is aftermarket activity um, uh, or overnight activity, and you can see the Dow slipped down here. We were down 500 points um, during the night. 
I think there is a possibility, and and I think a real possibility, that even though we have rallied up today, um, that we come down here and test um, that overnight low. Um, There's even that possibility, obviously, that we can break that overnight low and continue to see selling. Now, one of the reasons I say that is because we're following a downtrend here and that downtrend we've uh, last two days we've had that rally back this is that 15 minute chart we had that rally back um on wednesday and everyone thought oh hey the relief rally is in play we hit this downtrend and on down we go we gap down yesterday and we start this massive rally back and everybody thinks oh hey we're out of the woods the relief rally has begun and then we hit that downtrend and we continue to sell off so as we rally up this morning toward that downtrend uh, in the futures, we're going to want to be really, really careful here and focus on that downtrend. And remember, there's no real recovery in the market until we get that cross above a downtrend, a proof that it holds as support, a proof that it holds as support, and then see buying stepping in from that point. Then we have a recovery maybe starting, we have a relief rally maybe starting. But until that occurs, everyone, you have got to be extremely careful about jumping into any trade. Now, the reason I'm using a 15-minute chart, I am not a real day trader. Um, don't want, I don't like day trading personally, yeah, although I, I have made a a good living doing some day trading. I, I prefer to, to swing and position trade. Um, but in in a market like this, we're going to have to be focused on these shorter term charts for a while because that's where the recovery will begin. We'll see it in these shorter term charts quicker. So keep an eye on that. When we rally into these resistance points, and this is on any stock, we rally back up to those resistance points. We have to be very watchful for the potential. That's where the next wave of selling comes in. So keep that in mind um, as this recovery begins. We need to see that break above the downtrends. We need to have a proof that buyers are going to hold that as support. Then there may be some trades that we can start picking up. So with for long trades, um, for short trades, remember we wanna be watching that rally back to resistance and um, we can take advantage on those failures at that price resistance for those quick short trades. So with that, everyone, I want to wish you all a fantastic day, and I want to wish you even a better weekend. If you have the chance, just go do something else today. Go see a movie. Go take a walk. Um, take your uh, take your sweetheart out for lunch or something like that. And get away from this market and not worry about it because it will open again on Monday, and maybe we'll start to see some better price action. Y'all take care. Have a great one. I wish you all the best. We'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning.